let's keep talking about Article 210 branch circuits up to 1,000 volts AC or 1,500 volts DC. We're going to get into 210.52, which is dwelling unit receptacle outlets. Now, before we get into this too deep, um, I have another video that goes very, very deep into the kitchen island uh, countertop issue and I'll put a link down below the video so that you can watch that in its full length if you'd like to. So this video is going to cover everything that happened in 210.52 including 210.52a and some clarifications and added exception when it comes to the actual island peninsula change about the location and whether or not they're required we'll talk about that today but not quite as deep as my other video that already covered it so I'll put a link down there if you're interested more in that topic take a look there but let's go ahead and talk about today's topic stationary appliances are now addressed in 210.52 Receptacles are no longer required for kitchen islands and peninsulas, and receptacles beneath kitchen countertops are no longer allowed for countertop purposes, sort of. That's a, that's a dicey one, and again, that's where we really get into the deep video on the other, uh, on the other one. 210.52a, general. In every kitchen, family room, dining room, recreation room, living room, parlor, library, den, sunroom, bedroom, similar. Receptacle outlets are required in accordance with A1 through A4. So this is where we get our wall space requirements, the 6 foot, 12 foot layout. Uh, it is worth noting that only those rooms require receptacle outlets. So rooms like closets, storage rooms, mud rooms uh, don't need any receptacle outlets, just these ones. Where we see the change here is in A21, which tells us what wall space is. All right, so we have to have a receptacle for every, you know, 12 feet of wall space, essentially, where you can reach a receptacle within six feet of anywhere you stand. But what is a wall space? Well, a wall space includes any wall space 24 inches or wider and unbroken by doorways and similar or stationary appliances, fireplaces, or fixed cabinets that don't have a countertop or work surface. Okay, looking at this photograph here, certainly we've got a kitchen, and up here on the left, that would be a kitchen countertop. On the right, obviously, that also is a kitchen countertop. So those are covered by 210.52c. But, you know, if you go back, 210.52a, it says, look, in every kitchen, you need the regular wall space receptacles. So let's remove this range for just a minute, all right? And, and let's pretend that there's, there's not a receptacle for the range, there's no gas for the range. It's just a, a gap between these two countertops for whatever strange reason. That's wall space, isn't it? I would have to have a receptacle down there to satisfy 210.52a. Well, <clears throat> they made a clarification here, and, and really, in previous versions of the code, <laughs> you could easily make the argument that even with that receptacle in or even with the range in place, it's still wall space. Uh, I guess it really was. I mean, I don't think anybody's enforcing it that way. Do you have to have a convenience receptacle behind your range? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how convenient that is. So now it's very clear that the space consumed by stationary appliances is not considered wall space. So. I mean, probably a good change. Again, I don't know that anybody was enforcing it that way, but maybe somebody was, so we've, we've got a clarification. Now, what else is wall space? Wall space also includes the space occupied by fixed panels in walls other than sliding panels. Here's one that I think a lot of people miss, and, and look, I'm going to be honest, I miss this a lot as an inspector. What is wall space? Well, it includes the space occupied by fixed panels. So here we've got this uh, sliding door back here. From the far right to the center is the sliding portion, right? The openable po uh, portion of the door. That's not wall space. But that fixed portion of glass is wall space. So when you're doing your receptacle layout, you need to put your tape here in the center, pull it around to the left, and you need a receptacle within six feet. I think that gets missed all the time. And, you know, for me as an inspector, I wouldn't add things on the final inspection that I missed on the rough very often. So this is one where there's probably quite a few houses out there that are missing this receptacle under the bay window, uh, and it, it should have been there. So don't start your measurement here at the edge of the panel. Start it in the center of the panel. And that's not a change. That's been in the code since pretty much forever. 
Wall space also includes the space created by fixed room dividers like freestanding bars or open railings. All right, this railing is a wall space. So this room right here that takes up the main portion of the photograph, if that's a bedroom, kitchen, living room, dining room, recreation room, library, sunroom, etc., then it needs receptacles. Well, that's certainly going to be like a den or a rec room. So yes, this room needs receptacles and this railing is a wall space. So you're going to start your measurement over here on the left, pull your tape to the right, you need a receptacle within six feet and that's probably going to be a floor receptacle right could you put the receptacle in the stairs so that you reach through you know the stair the the railing to get to the receptacle uh, i know a lot of people that do that a lot of inspectors uh accept it if you're if you're twisting my arm and you want to know hey man this is a code question what does the code say well if you put the receptacle in the stairs then it's not in the recreation room, right? You need receptacles in the recreation room. If it's in the stairs, then obviously that doesn't satisfy the rule. So yes, this floor receptacle is absolutely required and it has been required for decades. All right, this is probably what everybody's wanting to talk about. 210.52C, countertops and work surfaces. Countertops or work surfaces, 12 inches or wider, in kitchens, pantries, breakfast rooms, dining rooms, and similar, must have receptacle outlets as indicated in items one through three. Okay, so on the left, this is certainly a countertop, right? In the middle, this also is a countertop. And over here on the right, well, this might not be a countertop, perhaps it's a work surface. And if that's the case, guess what? It still needs receptacles because countertops or work surfaces. So we have two countertops, one work surface. Do we need receptacles in all three of those? Uh, well, you might be surprised. We definitely need receptacles for the work surface back here. We need receptacle outlets for the countertop back here on the left. Do we need it for the island? Well, let's keep reading. 210.52C, receptacle outlets installed for the kitchen countertop and work surface covered in 210.52C do not count as the wall space receptacles discussed in 210.52A. All right, so what we're saying here is down here on the bottom right, that is my dining room. And you can see right at the edge of the photograph, right there, that I have a wall space receptacle for the dining room. Now, if I didn't have that receptacle, could you look at this photograph and say, hey, listen, here's my receptacle. I would start my measurement here and go 12 feet to the next required receptacle and that would comply. No, countertop receptacles do not take the place of wall space receptacles. This receptacle down here on the bottom right has to be there. So one serves the countertop, one serves the wall space and, and they don't intermix. By the way, the reason for that is actually not because of this type of scenario, but the peninsula right here. Here you've got this receptacle at the peninsula. Does that count as the wall space receptacle? As you're standing in front of that receptacle plugging in, does that count as the wall space receptacle behind you? Yeah, obviously that would not be a good idea. So that's why this change was put into place a couple of code cycles ago. If a multi-outlet assembly is used, which we often call plug mold in the field, right? But plug mold's a registered trademark uh, by, I think it's, well, I'm not positive who it is, either Leviton or Legrand. So here is my multi-outlet assembly. Can I use that for my kitchen receptacles? Of course. If a multi-outlet assembly is used, each 12-inch length of assembly is considered one receptacle outlet if it contains at least two receptacles. Perfect. So got plenty of receptacle outlets there. No need to worry. Receptacle outlets must be provided so that no point along the wall is more than 24 inches horizontally from a receptacle and their elevation must comply with 210.52C3. All right. Put our tape in to the left, pull it to the right. You need a receptacle within two feet and then four feet and then butt it into the range, pull it to the left. You need a receptacle within two feet and then same thing over along this wall. That didn't change. That's been the case for a long time. We still have the same exception that says a receptacle is not required behind a sink or cooktop in accordance with NEC figure 210.52C1, which is where you have a sink in the corner. So what you're going to do is measure between the actual corner and the back of the sink. And if that is less than 18 inches, you do not need a receptacle outlet behind the sink. Uh, I think every a lot of people are aware of that. Where people make their mistake is when they 
when they do the measurement for where the receptacles actually are required. You need to draw an imaginary line along the sink and then pull your tape back and have a receptacle outlet within two feet right there. And I think that's get, that gets missed fairly often. Uh, certainly over here on the right, mm, looks like where that switch is, probably need a receptacle right next to it. Now, we've got one a couple inches away, it looks like, and for me, I think that's probably close enough. But there you have it. We added a second exception, and I love this exception. I, I'm really happy that they put this in. It, it's not perfect code language, but quite frankly, I don't think I could write it any better, so I'm not going to complain. I mean, that, that's what's one thing to talk about. When you see a code rule that you hate and you say, oh boy, that's worded really poorly, well, put put your pen to the paper and, and see if you can do better. And if you can, submit it, you know? I mean, let, let's, let's, we're all in this together, you know what I mean? We're, we're all regulated by the code, whether we're an enforcer or an educator or an installer or designer. We all have to work with the code, so if you have an idea to make it better, make a proposal. I don't know how I would make this language better. See, here's the thing. The, the code is adopted in all 50 states, and it's adopted statewide in 46 states, and it's also adopted in several countries. We need to have a code that is a one-size-fits-all kind of document for every house in the United States and several other countries. Well, there's a lot of variation in houses, obviously. So sometimes we make rules and they just, they just don't work for every single application. So here we have an exception for kind of unusual kitchen layouts. And it says, look, if a receptacle outlet is required, but cannot be installed in the space next to the sink or the cooking appliance in figure 210.52C1, then one has to be provided as close as is practical to the countertop and the total number of outlets required by this section must be provided. Okay, cool. So back here behind the sink, uh, not very practical to put in a receptacle. Um, what about along here? Eh, that's going to be tough. So maybe we install one there and we say, look, that's close enough. I mean, Honestly, let, let's not let's not kid each other here. The intent of the code is that I can I can plug my crock pot in my you know my cooking appliances, my blender or whatever. Does it really matter if the receptacle is right here on the backsplash or six inches away back here on the windowsill? Come on, guys. Let, let, let's let's be realistic here, right? That, that doesn't make a difference. So the code is saying, look, make sure you have enough receptacles. Do the layout and put in as many as the code requires. But if you can't lay it out perfectly around the sink, then do your best. Love that change. Okay, now here's the one that everybody wants to talk about. Islands and peninsulas. And again, there's a link below to the video where I do a more deep dive into this specific subject. A receptacle outlet is not required for an island or peninsula countertop or work surface. All right, you do not need receptacles for this peninsula. Now again, go to the other video if you really want to get in depth as to why this happened. But one of the things that I think is interesting that we'll talk about really quick is that the peninsula begins at the connecting wall and I think it, 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 should, connect, it should start at the connecting edge. They changed that a couple of code cycles ago and I think they need to change it back because this receptacle right here is not required, right? We could we could move, we could actually eliminate that probably. And I, I don't think that that's necessarily a good idea. So anyway, you don't need a receptacle for the island or the peninsula. So there you go. If you choose to not install one, then accommodations to add one later must be provided. Now, again, we talked about code language and, and maybe this isn't perfect code language either, but I think it, it does what we need it to do. Listen, if you if you don't want to put in an island or receptacle, an island or counter or uh, island or peninsula receptacle, then you don't have to. But we're also not going to force the homeowner to have to remodel their whole kitchen if they wanted to add one at a later date. So we need to make it easy to add one in the future. Now that could be an unused raceway, right? That goes from box to from the box to the island or peninsula. Or it could be a spare NM cable going to the island or peninsula, put it in a, a single gang box, blank cover, put it in the bottom of the cabinet, that would comply, right? That's still accessible. 314.29 says boxes have to be accessible. 
putting it in the bottom of the cabinet is still accessible. They don't have to be readily accessible. So bury it down there in the cabinet and that would be compliant. We just have to have provisions to add one if we want to do it at a later date. 210.52C3 talks about location as it relates to elevation. Receptacle outlets for kitchen countertops and work surfaces must be in one of the following locations. Option one, they have to be above the countertop, but not more than 20 inches above the countertop. All right, so anywhere in this space here, and you would be good to go. Put them above, but not too high above the countertop. Item two, you can use receptacle outlet assemblies that are listed for use in countertops in a countertop or a work surface. All right, so this is a countertop. You can use a countertop receptacle in the countertop. You cannot use a work surface receptacle in a countertop. Go to the video where I cover countertops and work surfaces in Article 100 if you want to learn more about countertops versus work surfaces. Here's the same countertop receptacle in action. Put the countertop receptacle in the countertop or the work surface and that would be fine. Option three. So option one, receptacles can be above the countertop. Option two, countertop receptacles can be in the countertop. Option three, receptacle outlet assemblies listed for countertops or work surfaces can be installed in work surfaces. So here in the photograph, this is the dining room. And you can see over here in the back where the elevation of the work surface changes and turns into the kitchen countertop. Right where my pointer is, you could put a countertop receptacle. Here, it's a work surface. You would have to use either a countertop or a work surface receptacle. Over here on the countertop, you could not use a work surface receptacle. The glaring part of this change is that we used to have an exception saying, listen, if the countertop was perfectly flat, you could install the receptacle below the countertop, as long as you met some criteria, right? Six inch overhang, 12 inch maximum height, that's gone. So it now says, look, receptacles for the countertop are not allowed beneath the countertop. So you could easily argue that this is a violation. Um, if you read the code book extraordinarily carefully, I don't think this is a violation. This is simply an extra receptacle. It's not a required receptacle. It's one that I decided doesn't, right? You, you could say, hey, listen, man, that doesn't serve the countertop. That's just an, that, that's for my vacuum. And if the homeowner decides to plug in their crock pot, well, then how can I stop them? Look, I'm not going to get into it. Go to the other video. We talk all about that, whether or not this is legal or not. Personally, I think it is, but <laughs> you're really, you're towing a fine line there if you want to go down that road. The last thing 210.52C3 tells us that receptacles that are not readily accessible due to sinks, appliance garages, or appliances that are fixed or occupy a science space, those do not count as required outlets. All right, so it looks to me like we're missing a receptacle. I would butt my tape in to the left here by the, by the uh, ovens, pull it to the right, and if that space is more than 12 inches, which it certainly is, then it needs a receptacle outlet that uh, appliance garage stops the measurement. So I need one here, and between my appliance garage and my cooktop, I need one there as well. And it looks like behind the blender, we actually have one. So I'm compliant on the right, I'm not compliant on the left. All right, so there you go, 210.52. Certainly some big, big changes in that section. See you next time.